Mams and sirs, welcome to the Jared Bellman Show. We are located in our homes and offices, but my goal remains the same, to assist you in your personal and professional growth by talking to community leaders like our guest, Jesse Bacherman. This episode is brought to you by Pro 16 Productions. Pro 16 Productions combines experience, passion, and innovation to capture the essence of your projects. Jesse Bacherman is an enrollment counselor at Montreat School of Adult and Graduate Studies. He moved to Asheville in October of 2015 with his wife, Stacia. He earned a Bachelor of Journalism from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in 2004 and a Master of Science in Management and Leadership from Montreat College in 2019. Jesse has been an active member of the community, involved in organizations as follows, the Fletcher Business Association, Asheville Area Chamber of Commerce, Henderson County Chamber of Commerce, Business Networking International. Welcome to the show, Jesse. Thank you so much for having me, Jerry. Jerry, I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure to talk to you. So how are things going at Montreat? You guys sound busy. We are busy right now. So as you mentioned, I work at our School of Adult and Graduate Studies, which is education for busy adults. And when things like downturns in the economy or pandemics, which obviously have never happened in our lifetimes, um, happen, um, you start to think as an adult about the bigger picture a lot of times. And I'm having conversations with a lot of busy adults who either maybe are furloughed, who are losing jobs, who are thinking about changing careers, or are really thinking about providing for their family right now. And so we're actually busier than ever. Um, our summer uh, enrollment is the biggest it's ever been in my five years since we've been here, which is um, changing a downward trend that has happened in education because of the economy being so great. But obviously, this hiccup in the economy, and hopefully it's just a hiccup, um, has changed minds of a lot of people who are thinking about going back to finish off degrees or pursuing master's degrees. And so we're very, very busy, and I'm very, very blessed to have a job and to have the opportunity to help busy adults as they're thinking about these big picture items right now. Yeah, and it's a great time when we're all home to, to take on online classes. And so are you, you guys do have in-house classes, but have you increased your online classes due to all, everything that's going on? We have, the irony of this is the week that the coronavirus pandemic kind of officially kicked off that second week of March was the same week we were, were actually going to rebrand as Montreal College Online. And so that rebranding has been put on hold until after this pandemic is over. But we've been really transitioning in the last six months to a year of moving all of our graduate uh, business degrees and all of our undergraduate degree programs and certificates to online. We still have a master's degree, a master of arts in clinical mental health counseling, where students meet one night a week at our campuses in Asheville, Charlotte, and Morganton. And those classes for the end of spring and summer have been moved online. Um, because the accreditation body is okay with them being online, even though they're supposed to be in person, just because of the health and safety risks and things like that. Um, but the rest of our programs were really in the process of transitioning online to be fully online starting in the fall. And so we were ahead of the game um, compared to a lot of businesses and a lot of other colleges as far as being able to provide education. And our main campus for our traditional 18 to 22 year old students who are living on campus and had to leave campus, uh, they've done a great job of transitioning to online classes. We actually had a graduation a celebration online for all graduating students in our adult program and our traditional campus last Saturday. It was a great half hour celebration with the intention of having an in-person graduation at the homecoming event in October at Montreat. So hopefully everything gets back to the place where we can have that in October so that graduates can actually walk across the stage and all that sort of stuff. But Montreat has done a great job and I'm blessed to be working at a great organization that's been able to transition in the midst of all the craziness outside. Yeah, and it sounds like because, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some assumptions here, but it sounds like because you guys were already working towards the curve that we're on now, you were able to make some decisions, it sounds like quicker than a lot of other educational institutions. I mean, having a planned graduation October for homecoming and having that, that stuff, a lot of other people are struggling with right now that it sounds like you guys have already solved and moved forward from. 
Yeah, and they, they did a great job. Our staff, our marketing and communications on our main campus and just the leadership overall throwing together basically a graduation ceremony in two or three weeks after this, the decision was made based on Governor Cooper and local officials' recommendations to not have in-person classes the rest of the year in Buncombe County and beyond. And so they did a great job of throwing everything together. And, um, you know, our leadership has just done a great job um, with all of that. At, as you mentioned, some businesses just weren't prepared for it. Um, they've been maybe thinking about it, but they didn't already have things in place. And thankfully, we did have things in place and processes in place to make it work quicker than we thought it was going to. And so, again, uh, hopefully we still have the in-person graduation. I feel so bad for all the graduating high school seniors, college seniors right now that aren't able to walk across the stage here in May and June. Um, but hopefully those opportunities will happen later in the summer or in the fall for students to really get that recognition that they deserve for finishing off a huge accomplishment in their life. Yeah, that would be um, that is a special time. So. Along those lines, there's a lot of talk of a new normal. And you've seen over the last decade an uptick in online classes for undergrad. I really think this would be an uptick for graduate and adult studies in online that maybe two, three, five years ago was maybe a struggle because it wasn't normal for a 40-year-old to be using Zoom or Microsoft Teams or these programs. So do you see this being a I mean, I see it as a huge positive for you moving forward that you could push limits even more. Yeah, and you know, getting out of your comfort zone is a great way to describe it. You and I are both in people person. We like shaking hands. We like giving people hugs. We like talking in person. And a lot of adults who are seeking education are the same way. It's kind of that mentality based on when you were born generationally and stuff. But it's such a true uh, um, you know, story. And it's for me too. I am not a technology person. I am much more an in-person type person. And this uh, pandemic has really forced us to learn about things like Zoom and Skype and Microsoft Teams and learning how to communicate through a computer, um, most people um, had kind of transitioned to the social media aspect of the electronic world that we live in, being able to do Facebook and social media and all that sort of stuff as adults, posting stuff and all that sort of stuff. But the idea that it's come into business and it's coming to the business world now with, for instance, online ordering for food or clothes and stuff like that, for people who hadn't transitioned into the Amazon Prime world, you've really got into that because for safety of you and your family, you're trying to find ways to not go outside and not put your family at risk. And so that goes the same way with adult education and with online education is not only from our adult students who are wanting that option to protect their family and they're busy as it is. So the idea of coming to one class uh, one night a week is really, really tough as it is for somebody who's got a full-time job, who's maybe married, who has children, who's involved in their community and church. And so the online option gives them a very, very good reprieve from that to be able to kind of do it at home one week at a time based on their schedule. Um, but the idea with that is at the graduate level, more and more people are going towards graduate degrees because getting a graduate degree is kind of the new normal. Whereas in the 70s and 80s, you had to have your high school education and that was kind of it. Maybe in the 90s and 2000s, it was get your associates and bachelors. Well, now there are a lot of professions like healthcare, certain business where you really needed a, a, a master's degree in that to really move to the next step, moving up the corporate ladder. And so the idea um, for Montreat specifically, we have two graduate business programs that are now fully online, an MBA program and a management and leadership program, which I graduated with last year. And that gives an adult student even more flexibility based on location. You don't have to be in Western North Carolina. Uh, you can be out of state in Eastern North Carolina in another country and you can do the degree. And uh, Montreal does a great job of with our computer technologies and offering a fully online, 100% online degree. It really has opened up our abilities to reach out to more people. That's amazing. I'd like to transition a little and maybe talk a little about what you've done in the last few years of getting your degree because that was a goal of yours and, and it was a passion for you to advance your knowledge and be more valuable in the workforce. So you, you must be having tons of those conversations with people because right now is not just a time for people to step back and be like, I need a job. Now they're stepping back and have the time to say, I want the job. What are those conversations exactly. looking like? Yeah, for sure. And it really is about 
it's not just your career. Most of our students come back, they want to make more money. I jokingly say, if you don't like your boss, become your boss's boss, you know, things like that. But really at Montreal, which I really like about it, we don't just talk about career, we talk about calling as well. And that can be, you know, some people see that word as religious connotations. You can see it however you want, but why are you here? And that's not just to, for your family and your time outside of work. Why are you here 24 hours a day? What does your job mean to you, but also to your family and to the world? And kind of what are you giving back and what are you providing for the world? And I think people are having those um, internal thoughts and discussions in their own head, in their own families right now, you know, looking at your existence on this planet in uncertain times of pandemic. And you're wondering, you know, what, what should I be doing with my life right now? And people are having those discussions. And the idea of finishing off a bachelor's degree or getting a master's degree might open up other possibilities for your calling and career. And that's exactly why I pursued a master's degree. I was so done, Jared. You went to App State. I went to the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. I loved being a student, going to football games, going to parties, being in clubs, being a student, except for the reading and going to class. And all <laughs> yeah, that first. That's right. And I was a pretty good student and I loved learning and everything like that, but it's a different mentality. Some people have that lifelong learning mentality and a lot of our students have it where they just love soaking up information, whether it's online, reading books and stuff, that's just not my nature. And so 15 years after I finished my bachelor's degree, I finally went back and did it. I had a great opportunity working at Montreal to go to a school I was working at. And that's been a huge blessing, not only because I only had to walk across the hallway for my classes so my commute time was the shortest of any of the students in class with me going to class at six o'clock right after work if you will um, but also um, the idea of pursuing it it's helping me do my job better because I can answer students questions from the students perspective as well as from the admissions perspective and enrollment perspective and so I am having a lot of those discussions because adults get scared about going back to school if they haven't been in school for 10 15 20 30 years I was scared to death when I went back to school I had never done an online class before because I graduated in 2004 from college and we weren't using online classes at that point we still had textbooks and in-person classes for everything the internet was just going kids um, you know back then it's only been in the last 20 years where it's really picked up with education but I've been really able to have a lot of those really good conversations uh, with a lot of adults about things like that and then the idea of just completing something whether it's a class a week of class or a full degree it's just given me a, a sense of satisfaction and achievement and it's opened up a lot of options for me going forward if I want to go back and teach potentially or if I move on from Montreal or want to move up at Montreal someday having a master's degree Anytime you get education, it's only going to help you going forward. It's never going to hurt you having more education. Some people say that there's such thing as being overqualified for a job based on your experience, but you can't be overeducated for a job. I haven't run into that yet. Yeah, and I think that you hit on the importance of education is that it's, it's applicable. Like you're not, you're going to be able to use it at some point for something. Yeah, and even if it's just even if it's just personal, even if it's not professional, the personal growth that I got in the program, the relationships I made with my classmates, the experiences I had, the idea that I persevered veered through times that I didn't think so, like accounting and uh, finance, the eight weeks of that class, I never thought I'd get through it. That that was the toughest eight weeks of my academic uh, life. I got through it. I passed the class. I'm not going to tell you my grade. I finished the class and I finished the degree and things like that really carry along with you, whether or not you use the degree, quote unquote, for your job currently, or you don't get the promotion or the boost in pay right now. The experiences that you have personally and professionally will help you down the road, even if it's not immediate. And for a lot of people, it is immediate. So, Yeah. And they talk about an undergraduate, the lessons you learn that aren't the lessons in class. And that's it right there is the the lesson that you can get through something that you don't want to do. You don't, you wouldn't have chosen to do it if it was your choice, but it was something that had to be done to earn what you were told so that you followed the authority, which is something we could all learn and be better at in our own jobs is that there are authorities we have to follow. And sometimes we just have to do things that are difficult. No doubt about it, and especially a bachelor's degree, 120 credit hours, that's a lot of credit hours. And you're going to have classes and professors you don't like in a bachelor's degree, but most employers just want to see that you completed something. You finished off something that you started. And especially for the adult students, it is a huge thing to finish off something you started. It's much different going to college right out of high school, 18 to 22. You have less life experience than you do if you go back when you're 30 and 40. 
and it really is more enriching. And I'm speaking from personal experience, doing my master's at 35, 37 instead of 22 was just so much different. And I was able to draw off so many years, 15 years of professional work experience that it really was more enriching. And I find that with a lot of adults, whether it's an associate's degree, even a certificate to get another line on the resume or a bachelor's or master's, it's really more enriching as an adult. It's probably harder because you have more responsibilities and it's more expensive than it was and you might have a family. And so it's really tough. You have a job. It's really tough to juggle. But in the end, it ends up being more enriching because you have more life experience to bring into your papers and into your classes and into your conversations with other students. Yeah, that is true. And I think that there's a, the purpose of why you're doing it is going to be completely different after 15 years of being in a workforce or 30 years of being in a workforce and deciding to go back. I'd like to go back and talk about the fear you talked about. Is most of that from the unknown? No doubt about it. It's human nature and it's a great question, Jared. Um, I haven't been in school for this long. I'm not good with technology. How can I be a student again? I have all these other responsibilities. They're not excuses, they are legitimate reasons. But it really does come back to the toughest part is getting started. And for students who I've recruited, it's taken me three, four years for them to actually start classes. It's really getting over that initial hurdle of, is it the right time? And if so, can I do it? And the definition of right time is, obviously you have to be able to afford it, it's the right program and all that sort of stuff. But can I prioritize my life right now? And can school find a place in my life to be my new hobby or my new part-time job, however you wanna look at it? And can I actually do this and still be a good father or mother or husband or spouse? Can I still be a good employee? Can I still sleep? And I miss sleep for a couple of years doing my master's. I love to sleep. I'm an eight hour of sleep or more type kind of guy. And sometimes it was six or seven, but those sacrifices and things like that are the huge thing. And it really is people looking inside themselves and asking the question, can I do it? Once they get going, once they prioritize it, once they get that fire for finishing it, they're, they're golden and they roll and time flies just like it did uh, when I finished off my degree. But that fear really is tangible stuff like can I pay for this how is financial aid going to work all that sort of stuff but also the kind of the digging deep looking in yourself and talking about timing and whether you believe in fate destiny or God's time whatever you believe in is this the right time for me but more and more people every time I talk to them every time I talk to them say I wish I would have done this five years ago 10 years ago 20 years ago and so there's never a right time for a lot of big things in life but sometimes you got to jump in and once you jump in and once you care about it and life works out, it ends up uh, working out for somebody who prioritizes it in their life. I think, I think priority is a big thing, right? Once you choose that and winners win. So once you start doing something, that fear kind of goes away because you've take a baby step and you win at that, you're willing to take the next, the next step. And winners fail and then they win and then they fail again and then they win too. And so it's just overcoming all of those failures, all of those, uh, you know, classes where they didn't do as well, those subjects they don't want to take those uh, times where they had something crazy happen in life and their grade wasn't as good or they had to withdraw from a class. Can I bounce back from that? And it really is a life lesson going back to school. It really is. That's awesome. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about the work you do with other businesses too, because Montreal partners with uh, local businesses. We do, and we call it a corporate advantage program. That's a convoluted uh, phrase for cap partnership because we like acronyms in education just like every other <laughs> yeah. industry. Um, but the idea is we really want to try to promote higher education in the Asheville, Western North Carolina area and beyond. And we really want to try to incentivize it for students who come in because education is expensive. It doesn't matter if you go public or private, big school, small school, education is expensive. Um, it's not getting any less expensive. I've been blessed to work at a place in a school, Montreal College, which hasn't raised the rates of tuition for our adult students in the four and a half years that I've been here. And I don't know of any school that can boast that. My yeah. four years of undergraduate at Nebraska, they raised tuition nine to 15% every year, all four years. And so it's been a huge blessing. But with that being said, it's still very, very expensive. So we partner with big organizations and small organizations to provide tuition discounts for employees. And that tuition discount is 10% for the duration of your degree, but it's also 50% in the first semester that you take classes. And we have current partnerships with big businesses like Charter, uh, Charter Spectrum, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, um, places like Alida Home and nonprofits in Asheville and different things like that. And then also some smaller organizations, human services organizations and things like that our list right now is about 40 places like Buncombe County Schools. We're working on McDowell and Henderson County right now. 
um, places in the Charlotte area, uh, like Charlotte Mecklenburg schools as well. And so we have a lot of these CAP partnerships in place. They're free partnerships and our students often advocate for themselves, go to their HR people and say, hey, Montreal College has this program, it's free, and they wanna promote higher education. And most organizations and businesses are very receptive to it. The students obviously love it because they're getting a tuition discount. Businesses who pay employee reimbursement, and a lot of big businesses do that, they can do it up to $5,500 a year per employee for tax purposes, and um, you know do well on their taxes because they're really promoting education. So the businesses love it that are paying for their employees because they're basically getting the discount. And so it's really been a win-win in my time here. Again, about 40 organizations and growing all throughout Western North Carolina. But those partnerships, we want to promote the organizations and the businesses when they're looking, uh, looking for employees. We want to try to help them hire. When they have events, we want to try to promote them. But we also want to try to promote higher education and give their employees a really good incentive as an adult to come back to school and finish off a degree. That's special. Yeah, that's really getting engaged in the community. So Jesse, on every podcast, I ask every guest the same three questions. So I'd like you to see what your answers are. So the first one is, what is the most influential book you've read in the last six months? Ooh, wow. So I didn't uh, honestly go back to all of the other ones because I heard about this three question thing and I wanted to be caught off guard because I like being caught off guard because I like surprises. I'm one of the few people my wife hates surprises. That's why I surprise her all the time. Um, <laughs> um, the most influential book that I've read in the last six months. Wow. And so um, the easy answer for me um, as a practicing Christian and Catholic is the Bible. That's inspirational to me all the time. I just finished off a couple of books. Um, for those of you familiar with the Al-Anon organization, I finished off a couple of Al-Anon books that have really provided some inspiration and some guidance in my life. And so those are some good books that they're applicable to really anybody, um, whether or not, whether you're dealing um, with alcoholism in your family or not. Um, and there's been a couple of good books. A really good friend of mine named Jared was nice enough to give me some Christmas gifts and some gifts recently and some really, really good inspirational. I'm not a good reader. I'm a slow reader, but I really like the daily devotionals of looking at a topic every day and not having it being a really long one, but really adding, you know, a daily reading and a daily devotional time into my life. I do about a half hour in the morning and about 15 minutes before I go to bed. And I've read some really good devotions that have really been um, involved kind of in my life and I've made it a part of my life during this pandemic, but kind of just beyond that. And so I wish I had titles for you, um, but I'm on the spot and I'm not good at that, but that's, but I love it. And so those are a couple of things that pop into my head. Yeah. Those are some great points though, right? Like making time, even if it's just 30 or 45 minutes of your day, even if it's just 15 minutes of your day to read something that's out of not, not required for work, not required for school. Even if it's, you don't get anything from it. Just reading something every day. Um, I always and say not that. on the internet and start with five minutes and then go to 10 and then go to 15. It took me a while to get to 30 uh, for sure. It actually took me about 15 years to get to 30 minutes um, in the morning and stuff like that. But you build on it and you find really good stuff and it's not on your screen. It's actually on a piece of paper that I'm reading it, an actual book and everything like that. If you're into the electronic stuff, that's good. But I try to get myself away from the screens as much as possible just because I'm on them all day. And I'm the same way. I don't like reading on a screen. I tried it because it's cheaper and I can get more access and I just cannot, I can't do it. I like holding a book, flipping pages. I, I write a lot in books. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, I need that. I'm People, a highlighter. So yep. It's yeah. just, it's just not, it's just not the same in my opinion. So without a doubt, I agree. I agree. Well, great answer. Uh, and, and I'll follow up with Jesse. We can get some links in the show notes, uh, to what he's referencing. Uh, second question. In the last six months, what is something you've had to say no to? I'm very, very sad about this, but I love to travel. And I had booked a plane ticket in January to go back and see my family for the Easter holiday in Minnesota. I'm originally from Minnesota. And I left it up to my parents and my sister because I was going to be staying at my parents' house in the early April, second weekend of April is when Easter was this year. And on the Monday of the week, um, the agency I booked uh, the flight through was nice enough to give you up to 24 hours beforehand to cancel and they give you a credit. And so um, I had a discussion with my parents and my mom almost tears in her, you know, in her, in her voice over the phone and she's not a crier. Almost just like, I don't think it's good for you to come back during the, the pandemic. Completely understood what she was saying. 
travel is not, you know, something that's essential. This wasn't an essential trip by any means. I just missed my family and stuff like that. Um, and I could have said as a grown adult, a 38 year old man, mom, I'm coming home. I'll just stay at a hotel and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I had to say no to it. And um, in life, saying no is one of the toughest things for me, whether it's somebody asking for something and I'm not good at saying no because I want to help people or it's a situation like that where I don't want to say no, but I know that that's probably the best answer. And so I had to say no to that trip uh, back to Minnesota. It was an Easter unlike any I've had before without real church stuff going on and without family and stuff like that. I'm blessed to have a wife and we were together, um, but it was just a lot different. And so that was, that was a tough no in the last six months. And that's the one that pops into my head as somebody who doesn't say no very often. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it's, um, I think it shows a strength in character when people say no to something that they don't have to. Right? You didn't have to say no, but you chose to listen and be compassionate and make a large decision, a macro decision instead of a micro decision, which uh, is a good strength of character. So thanks for sharing that. Thank you. All right, last one. If I were to give you a billboard, and you can write whatever you wanted across this billboard and millions and millions and millions of people would see it. What would you put on the billboard? That is a great question. And I think as people continue to watch your awesome podcast, Jared, and these episodes that you're doing with video, I really hope they move ahead to the last three questions. I want to, I, you know, obviously I want the entire interview being listened to. I want you to check that all out, but this is just a great question. And so to me, the world is too fast. And that was, that was my opinion before this pandemic in my 38 years on this earth, going through the eighties without computers, the nineties before the internet really happened, then two thousands with social media taking off. And now the internet and computers are running our lives. I just really think more and more people are just not obsessed, but they are encapsulated and just completely engulfed in the idea of more and of more information and and doing more entertainment, always being involved. And in my experience, if I'm that way, I get really tired, really fatigued, really exhausted and really irritable, really, really quick. And I just wish the world would do a couple things. And the billboard would basically just say something like, take a deep breath, relax, breathe, tell somebody you love them and really think about what's going on in your life and what's going on in the world. I'm not a marketing guy, so that's a long billboard, but think, breathe, relax, take a deep breath, and really think about the people you love, the stuff that you're doing, and what does it mean for you? But beyond that, what does it mean for the world and your family, your friends, and really mold your life about around those priorities, around those thoughts. And so it would be something like that. I'd give it to a marketing guy and pay somebody like you who's really good at stuff like that. Um, you know, the ability to make a billboard for, but those are some of the thoughts that come into my head. No, I think that really shares your heart. And, uh, I can attest that that's, that's how you've always thought it. This isn't just the current, uh, contemporary response. This is how your heart really is. So thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. We've known each other for four years and uh, you're somebody I respect a lot too. I really appreciate the kind words, um, but um, our world is fast and we need to slow down sometimes, whether you're driving and ease up on the gas pedal a little bit or just in life, just slowing down and taking a deep breath and enjoying the sunshine every once in a while. See, I like that right there. You can put that on the other side of the billboard. (laughs) Nice. Nice. (laughs) Well, Jesse, I'm so thankful for your time. I appreciate you being on the Jared Bellman show. Thank you so much for having me, Jared. Really appreciate it. Thank you for watching The Jared Bellman Show. Be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell for future notifications, and check out the description for more information.